Monday, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the online talk, Solutions to Plastic Pollution. My name is Shui, and I'm honored to be your host for this morning. Thank you all for joining us from the comfort of your homes as we delve into the topic together. First of all, let's take a moment to appreciate the power of technology that allows us to connect and learn from anywhere in the world. Today, we have two esteemed experts in the field of environmental health and plastic pollution research who will share their knowledge and insights with us. Get ready for an enlightening session. Before we start the talk today, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Reno Rakmata Mukti to deliver the opening remark and set the tone for the talk today. Without further hesitation, let's welcome. Thank you, Ms. Ng. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, World Environment Day 2023 event organized by ITB, Institute of Technology Bandung, as well as ACS Publications um, in ASEAN region um, office uh, in Malaysia. So, yeah, um, this event actually we organize annually, uh, collaborating with the ACS Publications uh, Chapter Malaysia. Uh, and I'm glad here to. Um, to open the event. And uh, the World Environment Day actually is hosted by a different country uh, with the host country taking the lead in organizing event activities and campaign to raise awareness about environmental issues and encourage actions. So actually uh, this year, to, uh, the World Environment Day was is hosted by Cote d'Ivoire country and supported by the Netherlands. So, and then the, this year's theme focus on solution to plastic uh, pollutions. So um, actually, um, we uh, we concerned about these uh, plastic uh, pollutions, as uh, you might know that uh, there are 430 million tons of plastic annually uh, produced, and then two thirds of which are short-lived products that soon become waste. So, and then uh, this is uh, becoming our concern. Uh, that that's why in this forum we would like to discuss about it. And then we uh, have uh, two keynote speakers uh, today. Uh, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Amanda Semiring from Institute of Technology Bandung, Faculty of uh, Civil and Environmental Engineering. Hello, Ibu Amanda. How are you? Hi, I'm very good. <laughs> okay, thank you for um, uh, accepting our invitation to become the keynote speakers. And then we have uh, Dr. Jane uh, Gu uh, Laiti from Sunway University, Malaysia. I would like to uh, greet uh, Dr. Jane. How are you? Hi, morning. Good morning, everyone. Hi, good morning, Dr. Jane. Yeah, so we actually uh, uh, looking forward to your uh, presentation today. And then uh, I uh, give back uh, uh, this uh, to the MC. So please, Ms. Ng. All oh, right. Thank you, Dr. Reno, for such motivating opening remark. I believe all of us here are all ready for the talk today. Now, let me introduce to you our first honorable speaker. All oh, right. Okay. So, our first honorable speaker, Associate Prof. Dr. Gil Lighty, is from Sunway University, Malaysia. Dr. Gyu is an associate professor at the Department of Biological Sciences. She earned her PhD in chemistry at University of Malaya. Her dissertation covered lipid protein interactions using the Lang Moi biologic technique and atomic force microscopy to develop new antibody targeted liposomal drug delivery system formulations. She's active, actively involved in research activities that are in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals by using the new developing green and safe alternative processes and chemicals. She's also passionate and committed to understand and address plastic pollution issues to achieve a sustainable world through change in policy and social structure. In her course and study, Dr. Gyu has received several awards, namely Outstanding Woman in Science Chemistry by Venus International Woman Awards, Chennai Bentham Ambassador, and the most recent is the SSHN High Level Scientific Days Scholarship for Young Researcher by France Embassy in Malaysia. 
In her line of research and study, Dr. Gyu has published research papers in prominent research journals and has demonstrated her commitment and dedication, which are evident through her works with numerous research partners and grants. Now, please join me in giving a warm virtual welcome to Dr. Jen Gyu Lighty. Thank you. Can I, can I, uh, can you stop sharing screen? Thank you for the introductions, MC. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Hi, good mo uh, morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. So today, today uh, in Malaysia, is a public holiday because it's an Agong birthday. Okay, thank you for uh, all the attendance. And thank, uh, I would like to thank uh, Institute of Technology, Bandung, and uh, ACS Publications for, invitation, for these invitations. I'm happy to speak on the, uh, today on today on uh, uh, World Environmental Day, okay? So today, uh, I, I, let me introduce myself. My name is Jane, okay? I, I am a associate professor in uh, Sunway University, Malaysia. Okay, I'm going to talk about individualized uh, community refuse audit for plastic waste reductions and uh, management. Since today's, uh, this, since this year team is on the solutions to pl plastic pollutions. Mm -hmm. So, um, so if you look at uh, yesterday, yesterday uh, there's a heavy rain, right? Heavy rain and and there's a flood. I stay in Satya Alam, so my area is affected. So, uh, the flash flood, flash floods, uh, is a pressing issues to the climate change. So, we want to know. Look at the, look, if you look at uh, the pictures here, the poor waste management, the poor waste management, does uh, and including plastic pollutions can alter the habit, habitats and natural processes. And it create a lot of losses to ourselves. So the, there's a, this recent study, so it, uh, for Lawrence May, Major in 2021, so he, he did some calculations and you can see that in the in the uh, in his calculations or he, his work, he, he shows that uh, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia are the top rank number five. Um, country. So this total annual global riverine plastic emissions into the ocean is an important output to account the severity, it's very serious, and the fate of the macro plastic pollution. Macro here because we can see them floating on the river or on the, on the oceans. So there's an um, um, Elderman, Elderman Trust Barometer was conducted. Okay, and it published recently this year. So this this um, work was conducted uh, on first to twenty eighth of November in twenty twenty two. Involved uh, twenty eight countries um, uh, participate in this uh, the barometer, including Malaysia and Indonesia. Okay, and uh, to, in in involved thirty two res thirty two thousand respondents. The first uh, the first most worried. Uh, about people worried about in 2023 is the job loss. Job loss also due to the recent climate, uh, sorry, the pandemic, COVID-19 is causing uh, a lot of people got no job and then uh, a lot of uh, changes and uh, the new normal. So the second highest, what, what we most worried about is the climate change, sorry, climate change. So it takes up to 76%. Also, also uh, this percentage is also due to the flash flood that it occur in not only Malaysia, in overseas, in Europe country, in Italy as well. Okay, so uh, my my some of my work. So I found in twenty nineteen, I found microplastics, um, in edible salt. So why we we sample twelve brands of uh, edible salt from from uh, hypermarkets. That means these sorts are what we eat every day, okay? And, and we, we, we found microplastics from these 12 brands of salt. So um, the, the, presence, the presence of microplastic in the sea salt is an indication of uh, marine plastic pollutions. So it is very serious. So other than uh, what we do in uh, my, my, lab, my lab do, uh, in the edible salt. So we also found, not, of course not my group, so uh, the recent study also found microplastic in the blood, human blood and baby pools. 
Okay. So in the most the, the most reasons, the most recent roadmap by uh Kementerian Alam Sekita and uh, I am Malaysia, Ministry of Environmental and Water in Malaysia. So they come out with this roadmap, Malaysia Plastic Sustainability Roadmap, uh, 2021 to 2030. Hopefully it, it, it actually works until 2023. So in this roadmap, they they um they shortlisted, I would say that they 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 shortlisted four types of uh, plastic. Four type of plastic material. So, uh, because I, I I believe some most could be most of you are chemists. So, if you are from uh, ACS uh, ACS American Chemical Society, so these are the four type of the plastic material, which is highly produced and disposed uh, of, and then uh, it is very commonly used for single use packaging, and shorter application lifetime. Okay, and has the highest recyclable value. Shortest, uh, shortest application lifetime means that uh, if you go and pack food, so you pack, maybe you queue for a while, you pack, and then maybe five minutes packing, pack, pack um, a lunch box, and then after you eat another five minutes, then, then you throw. So maybe the total lifetime of that plastic packaging is only 10 minutes, okay, 15 minutes that you, you take away plus the process of you pack it and you eat it the time. So it's only like 10 minutes of the lifetime and then you throw, then we throw. So they shortlisted uh, four types, which is uh, PET, okay, PET, HDPE. PET is widely used as a mineral water bottle, okay, for the water bottle. HDPE, LDPE, uh, LL, low density uh, PE, these are the type of the plastic that we use for uh, detergent bottle, shampoo, um, body shower bottles. PP number five, um, properly, uh, polypropylene is widely used as the food packaging. So if we, uh, also due to COVID-19, a lot of um, uh, delivery, food delivery have happened and, and is instilled until today. Since uh, even though we can already go out and eat or dine in, but uh, the practice or the, the habit of uh, food delivery is still there because of the convenience, I guess. Okay, so we don't have to go really go out and buy food. So we can just press on the, and we can just order food uh, via phone, uh, more apps, mobile apps, and food will deliver to your office or to yourself, to home. Okay, so uh, uh, polypropylene is number five, which which is one of the highest use and produce on and disposed at the at the uh, in this roadmap, and it in and four of them have the highest recyclable value. I would like to speak a little bit more on on here because I think if any other other country can also uh, look, appreciate this uh, this this summary is very good because then we have one, one a similar goal to to how to improve this uh, plastic usage and plastic lifetime usage. So they, they have uh, three key, key innovation strategies. Number one, which is phase out. Phase out the plastic material that we don't, um, we don't really use anymore, okay? And then you re reuse, uh, something that I always re uh, encourage or advocate on, refuse and reuse. And then the material circulation. Material, material, material circulation is more on the recycling business. So okay, okay. Why, why do uh, this roadmap um, summarize or shortlisted four type of plastic material? Uh, do anyone know that? Anyone can guess why? Why do we do that? Why the government or why the Kementerian have this kind of thought to 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 shortlisted four types of. Uh, um, mostly highly produced, highly disposed, and highly uh, recyclable value. Anyone? Something that you can think of, you can type on the chat. Or you can guess. Okay, I see some. Yes, uh, why, why do we want to know the most uh, used plastic in Malaysia? Why do we want to know? What was the purpose of knowing that? Okay, so for example, right? So for example, uh, someone, someone have a uh, big of money. So if we want to, if the government want to invite investor to, re, uh, to open a recycling center. So for, ex for example, you, you, you may have a, uh, a, a big a big amount of money you want to invest 
okay, let's say you start start a recycling uh, center. So recycling center, we, we can't, as a, um, if we are a chemist, we, we can't have a mixture of all this plastic waste. We, we, it's very difficult for us to uh, recycle them. So re one of the recycling uh, method is to through pyrolysis um, re uh, pr process, chemical processes. So segregations, segregations into individual type of plastic is very important. So if we can shortlist down, shortlist down all uh, four, ty four type here, and we just focus using this four type rather than seven type of the plastic, because we can't open, uh, it, it's, it's less efficient, I would say, to open a recycling center and uh, having having all seven type of plastic pollutions, or if we, if we adopt a uh, seven type of uh, chemical processes to, to, to re-convert. Pyrolysis is one way to convert uh, poly polymer into a uh, solvent again. So if let's say a uh, polymer, we can reverse the process into monomer, they are no longer a plastic or they are no longer a polymer. So if we can uh, consolidate consolidate the plastic material that we use, so, so it actually encourages us in this roadmap also it encourage us to rethink the pa packaging other than reuse and refuse. We also want to rethink of the product and then rethink of the business model. So if we, if we can consolidate it into these four types, then we can uh, encourage the investor to just open uh, of uh, or to have or to to implement recycling center of having all these uh, four four type of uh, four type of chemical processes. We narrow down. We can consolidate the budget as, as well and the investor as well. The 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 uh, the uh, cost cost effect effectiveness as well. Okay. <clears throat> so, but however, the challenges. So the challenges is we do not segregate our waste. If you look at the waste, may I know? Maybe you can just like, or you can just uh, react. If you segregate waste at home, can you? Uh, I think you can just react. Do you segregate segregate your waste at home? Maybe easy easy things is segregate your food waste from the plastic waste. You can, you can react, right? <laughs> So <clears throat> very e something very easy that we can do. So um, why segregate waste segregation is important. So this is the common things that we see in uh, every everywhere in the bin, uh, in the university and the 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 home at home. So if you look at uh, <clears throat> what why uh, segregation is very important. So we can if we can segregate food waste from plastic waste, so we can compose the food waste. And avoid avoid uh, all these food waste and mixture of the waste uh, end up in the landfill. Okay, end up in the landfill. So if we can compost the com uh, compost the food waste and then uh, the plastic waste, and we can send them for for recycling. Correct. So if we if we can, uh, <clears throat> this is the challenge. So in my talks today, we're gonna talk about uh, the waste audit, the refuse audits here. So if we have, um, uh, we know, we all know that uh, all this uh, climate change, uh, set, if sending waste to the landfill for food, food waste sent to the landfill, then it will cause, uh, it will emit carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, uh, methane gas, which will increase, uh, which are also, which are some of the example of greenhouse gases that will increase the global temperature, right? And causing the climate change. Recycling, so we can, if we can better manage our waste segregations, so plastic can go to the recycling, aluminum can, can go into recycling. And from uh, plastic waste, we can further separate into a uh, different type of material as well. So uh, in this refuse uh, audits, or it is also known as the waste audits. So uh, what we, in the current status, so we, what we have done is uh, we conducted a systematic review and we reviewed 31 articles. So we found what 31 articles where, where it is uh, related. So it, 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 from the waste audits, uh, we can obtain household waste data because it starts from the home anyway, okay, method, method, method that we can use. So in this, uh, among these 31 articles, uh, Africa is five. Okay, five, uh, five publications from Africa, five publications from America. 
very little, two from Malay, uh, two from Asia, one from Malaysia and one from uh, China. And uh, the highly, highly, uh, the country that uh, highly produced or highly conducted this kind of uh, research is Europe, which is N equals to 15. And uh, Middle East is four. So if you, if, I, if you look at here, I highlight it in the red. So Asia is like uh, having her very poor, poor uh, contributions in this uh, waste audit. Okay, um, so the method that, uh, so in this review, we look at, um, try to look at the, what is the current status and then the research gap. So in the method used to conduct waste audit, <clears throat> uh, we, we review the, um, the method that they conduct waste audit. Uh, quantifications and compositions, what are they? Okay, uh, like, uh, is it a food waste, plastic waste, uh, uh, municipal solid waste, okay, uh, which is the next one. And then uh, characterization, what are the methods used to characterize the waste material? So uh, in, in the review also found that um, uh, municipal solid waste, okay, uh, widely uh, was recorded, right? And then organic waste such as food waste. Household food waste, uh, right? And household, maybe plastic waste is the most. Okay, the method that uh, used in these 31 articles, they are self-reporting. For example, uh, the participant was asked to write a uh, food waste diary to record now what, what are they, what is the waste every day and, and weigh, and weigh, record the uh, the amount or measure the amount of waste that they produce. A survey uh, questionnaire and then an interview after, before and after they conduct the uh, waste audit. So there are some uh, limitations and challenges that uh, report reported in this uh, review that we have done. Small, some, uh, small sample size. So uh, then we will have uh, also have bias in the recruitment of participants because people who uh, who tend to participate are people who may uh, already practice practice the uh, waste segregation at home, right? And then a small sample size will give uh, high uh, standard deviations. And then uh, because if let's say you have only 10 participants, then the percentage is very high and or very, can, could be very low. So the reading may, may not, uh, may deviate and or may not be reliable. And then lack of uh, financial incentive, people may look at uh, or take up so much of my time. Is it worth it or for me to conduct, uh, to help out with your survey? Okay, uh, or because of the self-reporting, self self-reporting will underestimate the food waste. Okay, and then it tends to be more self-conscious during the investigation periods. So when uh, they, they know that whatever they write down, somebody will read it. So they, they, they become extra self-conscious. There are certain things they don't uh, record, okay? All right, and then uh, also uh, the durations, like uh, for example, one to two weeks is rather short to instill a habit. Okay, and then uh, female respondents uh, were over represent, represented in the research is about 74%. Okay, and then uh, because uh, so majorities uh, like uh, students, uh, students, uh, students reps, uh, respondent could be very low because the, the person who, who in charge in the family uh, are usually the mother. So ma ma uh, female respondents uh, rate the highest in the research. And then a uh, food waste can be seasonal. I'm not. I'm not uh, too sure in uh, Indonesia. Okay, maybe you can share in other country, Philippines, uh, Vietnam, or or else. And then uh, in in my in Malaysia, I tend to observe that um, during festival, Chinese New Year, uh, Raya, and then the fasting months, uh, it, it will contribute contribute to more food waste in during this period of time. Because we can, we may have like some uh, kanduri, you know, fasting to uh, fasting month, and then we have buka puasa together, and then buffet, eating buffet. Buffet is one of the one of the highly uh, food waste contributions activity. Okay, what uh, myself uh, as an individual or in the university, what we we have done. So uh, due to this this. Um, uh, study. So we we in the in my university in Southern University we segregate uh, the food waste from the plastic waste, and then uh, we compose. This is a compost machine that I'm, I'm I'm showing myself here. Okay, we compose the compost uh compost the the food waste and convert it into fertilizer, the organic compost. 
And then I have uh, myself, my students, and I uh, also involved a lot in uh, uh, organize a lot of the awareness awareness event in the university. So let the students to, to create the awareness and every day, um, uh, com this one is a community service. So they sell the compost that we do. And then the, 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 uh, the other one is the seed bomb, uh, seed bomb uh, workshops that we conducted in the university. So we, we, what we do is we keep on talking about it. You know, we create the awareness and we create the culture. And then um, in the in my research team, my uh, research assistant uh, won, won the WWF Malaysia Eco Champion Awards in, last year. So uh, what they did is uh, they have done they received uh, five thousand grants for a ten weeks project entitled Food Waste Segregation and Management. We we empower twenty household with the food segregations and food uh, management knowledge and practice. So uh, the participants uh, twenty household participants uh, record record down the waste that they 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 generated at home okay <clears throat> and other than uh, other than uh, what we have done in the university uh, we also uh, uh, engage with the local council okay uh, and majlis berbandaran uh, subang jaya so we conducted like uh, where me composting this is my uh, these are my colleagues okay, in in my team so we conducted like where me composting workshop uh, among to introduce this uh, idea to the community. So because of uh, the com the composting machine, composting machine adopting a composting machine may not be feasible in the household because the household do believe trust me because I have done uh, with the waste segregation in my home as uh, individual uh, my home myself and then the food waste is very very little. So it's not so feasible to to get a composting machines like what the people trying to sell the idea. Uh, it's, it is better to compost uh, in your garden or adopt a vermi compost or vermi compost is we use the uh, worm. We use worm to, to compost the food waste. Okay, so uh, some of the impact that we have made uh, from this project, from our project, is like uh, we in because we use the compost machine in the uh, university. So we every day, every day we convert sixty kg of food waste. So food waste, this food waste is mainly from uh, the kitchen waste. Okay, uh, for from the vendors from the cafeteria, the canteen. So they prepare, uh, they will segregate all the food waste, the kitchen waste from the plastic waste. And then we will put it into the compost machine every day about in, in every day evening, 4 p.m. So we managed to reduce uh, carbon dioxide emissions uh, about 6,000 6, tons. And we also in, uh, save a, social, a, a big amount of uh, social costs with, with these conversions. And then, uh, so now, uh, other than uh, numbers, the in environmental impact from carbon dioxide emissions. So uh, the vendors, the cafeteria vendors are now practicing waste segregation. This is a very, very, very important behavioral change that we instill. Because uh, we, we may, may, many people may do it because of uh, penalty or rewards. But in our university, our vendors practicing it uh, willingly because they know that uh, uh, it, it is good for the environments and we don't really throw everything into the landfill, <clears throat> mix everything. So the outreach program, we successfully uh, organized six uh, seed bomb workshop in uh, 2022. And then uh, about 2030, we involved all the students, uh, my research assistant, my master's students, PhD students, right? 30 students ambassador volunteer with us, okay? Uh, and, and one of the achievement is my RA was cr were crowned with the uh, WWF Eco Champion in 2022, and we collaborate with local council to uh, to promote uh, or empower the residents to manage food waste uh, from composting the community composting uh, practices. We other than uh, the the work that we have done a lot of community work that we have done, we also uh, work on some projects that relates to the psychology psychology. Uh, uh, psychology. So uh, we have done few project, uh, few survey, knowledge, attitude, practice, uh, KAP of Malaysian towards uh, single use plastic. You may you may can look at it. You know they. So we we uh, conclude that the Malaysian display a good net level of level of knowledge and attitude, uh, with lower than average practice. So we have 
practice towards the single-use plastic. So we have uh, knowledge and attitude, but practice is very, very low. The other work is on the urban littering, throwing rubbish. So, so we have some, some findings. Work, work is uh, coming up uh, because the, we're still getting more participants, uh, but respondents, uh, so we, we haven't published the work yet. So the, uh, the participant exhibit positive uh, attitude towards urban littering. Okay? They are more aware uh, of their attitude, but their intentions towards uh, urban littering were very low. So they have very marginally um, marginal uh, belief in anti-urban littering. And then where the family and friends are not the dominant factor, that means uh, if family and friends throw, that means the surroundings does not affect their decisions. Okay, And then a pressure, social pressure affect the uh, participant willingness to engage in anti-urban littering be behavior. And one, one um, uh, surprise, one surprise uh, found findings that we found is environmental knowledge has no significant effect on urban littering intention. So if you think that you want to conduct a lot of uh, workshop on the knowledge wise, please think, please think wise, think twice. Because uh, keep, we keep on giving knowledge is not, is not, uh, maybe not effective uh, uh, anymore. So what we what we encourage or what I rest, uh, what I suggest is to make them make uh, the participant to practice to contribute to to do it call uh, do it by action. So the other projects that are uh, more on the psycho educations intervention. This is one because we have done a lot on the baseline KAP. Uh, we have created a few baseline already. So this this project. Uh, is still ongoing, but it's among the Malaysian. So if let's say if you have any uh, any anyone from you from any other country, uh, we can uh, collaborate because we we create we already designed the question and the interventions and we can we can do it in an another country so that we can make a comparisons as well. And other than the research publication, definitely is more on the educating the the community or or everybody know how to do it, how to do it right how to recycle it right because this project is to know whether can i recycle this and which bin or which um, bin to throw in or which plastic material that they make of okay okay i i have a video uh i can show everyone from uh, this is the this is some um, activity from in the sunway university malaysia Can you can you hear? Can you hear before? Hi, Dr. Gyu. We can't hear any yeah. sound from her. Yeah, because I think I didn't take the Okay. Conscience. A state of awareness with a feeling of obligation. To do the right thing and to do the thing right. At Sunway University, we aspire to cultivate a sense of collective responsibility within our community of learners, educators, researchers, and inspirational leaders. Nurturing a holistic education whilst promoting a planetary health mindset. Through education, practice, and experience. At Sunway University, we encourage a heightened sense of awareness and responsibility of the world we live in. Our actions, our desires, the outcomes, and the results. We practice what we preach. By doing it physically, harnessing renewable energy, conserving the planet
taking vital resources seriously and delivering it to all. Creating solutions, planning for a greener future, identifying sustainable solutions and working together to achieve them by instilling a culture of conscience in our campus, our community, our city and our collaboration of countries. To be that little voice of positive influence in all who pass through these halls of enlightenment. To give our beloved planet and future generations the greatest gift of all. The gift of a sustainable future. The gift of eternal life. To do the right thing and to do the thing right. Sunway University, truly a class above. Okay, that is that is um some of the work that we have done in the Sunway University. Okay, what's what's next? <laughs> what's next? So there are, so today I want to remind you or encourage you again. Uh, see, are some simple way. Uh, is a. Uh, So there are some uh, there are some simple way to reduce or refuse uh, single use plastic waste, especially like what I mentioned just now the shortest lifespan. Okay, so br you bring your own uh, shopping bag, reusable shopping bag for to, for shopping, grocery shopping, everyday things. Coffee, uh, bubble tea, juice. Uh, use your own reusable cup. You can you can choose something that uh be uh BYOC bring your own container to uh, to buy some uh, grocery grocery dry 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 food, okay use you use glass container and then uh also buy a bulk, bulk, buy in the bulk to reduce the plastic packaging waste. So I would like to end uh my talk with my own effort. Okay, these are some of the the my own uh movement my what I practice every day. Uh, I I champion in the sustain uh, SDG goal number twelve responsible consumptions and rep, uh, productions. I make a a lot of awareness on that. Uh, and I also founded my own NGO. Uh, my plastic ecology. Okay, I think that's all from myself. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Dr. Gil, for the insightful sharing. Your expertise and patience for plastic waste reduction and management are truly inspiring. I'm sure our audience is eagerly awaiting, okay, for the opportunity to engage with you. Next. Please allow me to proudly introduce to you our second speaker for today. Oh, right. I'm sorry for my poor Wi-Fi connection. All right. Associate Professor Dr. Imenda Sembring is an Associate Professor in Environmental Engineering Study Program, Institute Technology Bandung, ITB, Indonesia. Since year 2021, she is the external principal investigator for United Kingdom Research Institute for tackling plastics waste in developing country. She's also the core investigator for IGES death study on microplastics in East Asia. She has been granted research grant from Asia Pacific Network from year 2018 to year 2021 relates to microplastics in aquatics environment and also grants from Ministry of Higher Education relates to utilization of plastics. In year 2015 to year 2020, she has also become the resource person and leader of waste studies for waste to energy feasibility study for Lego Nanka landfill sites. 
Santa Intermediate Transfer Facilities and Sabakita Landfill Site, Bali and Jakarta Intermediate Service Facilities Collection Area, Study ITF Santa. The team consists of Technology, Economy, Environmental and Social Division, which involve more than 10 people. Up to date from 2000, 2015, she has become a resource person for Environmental Centre Division, Ministry of Industry, Department for WTE, Recycling and Sustainable Packaging, and also BPPT for Plastics and Microplastics Impact. Several highlighted activities are involvement of study on coal to ethanol, which is funded by Pertamina, waste audit and assessment and verification of environmental data for several mining and oil companies. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dr. Amanda Sambiri. Hi, thank you, Master Ceremony. Um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, selamat pagi. Good morning to all of you. Okay, so I'm an outsider here because most of you is a scientist, right? A chemical scientist. However, I'm glad that I joined this ACS. Previously, I think I joined this uh, event um, and I become a, a jury <laughs> and review the student competitions. Anyway, um, Dr. James, uh, I would like to send my best regard to Professor Aga from Sunway University. She's one of the very best colleagues of mine. And we we involve several uh, activity with him. Uh, in fact, I in, invite him to Bali uh, just in March this year to attend the, the fifth international waste working group, Asian Region Sessions. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I know all of you is a chemical scientist, but I would like to highlight um, other things that probably it will direct all the scientists, including the chemical scientists, to, to research what type of research, what the needs to, to improve, what kind of solution that we can provide for the, this plastic uh, pollution and challenges. Okay. Uh, so I share the screen. There you are. Can you see my screen? Can you see? Yes, okay. Yes. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Reno who invited me to, to join this. I think it's it's a bit challenges for me because I know that all of you is a uh, scientist, but again, I think uh, now it is time of multidiscipline, interdiscipline collaboration. So we can see from different sides of perspective. Uh, I would like to thank Dr. Danes because you already start with the, from personal individuals interests, uh, how we can deal it from ourselves. And then now I, I, I move it to farther away into nationals in Indonesia and also regional, if you are interested. So we are discussing about developing and conducting marine plastic debris monitoring. And I share some other piloting study in Indonesia. Okay, as we know, plastic productions is increased over time since it's produced back in the mid 20s. And, and it's showing that around 400 million ton of plastic produced every year globally. And around 300 million ton of plastic will end up in the landfill site or in the environment. And it is also predicted 11 million ton of this will end up on a plastic debris in the oceans. Okay. As we know, I know you are a chemical scientist, you know what is plastic made from, right? James already mentioned there are several types of plastic polymer who are interested as a plastic polymer here. You know what is one mean, what is symbol one mean, two, three, four, and et cetera. Um, it, all of the resins and all of this uh, plastic, is pro, uh, it's, it's produced by using a synthetic 
substance, right? When it's synthetic substance, it takes a long time to degrade it in the environment. So what I would like to highlight here, there is already so many evidence showing that um, there is a negative impact of this plastic accumulation in the environment. Plastic is easily drifted, accumulate, um, entangle, a trap that can killing the animals, including fish, sea, turtles, um, birds, you, to name a few. And there's some massive evidence if we are do, conducting a literature, uh, a systematic review regarding uh, the negative impact of uh, plastic pollution in the environment, you will be find a lot, thousands or millions of uh, scientific report regarding of this. Again, it's not always about the environment, but what we know, the plastic pollution is not only uh, generate the negative impact to the environment. Dr. Jen already mentions that it's also uh, impose a negative uh, impact for social economy. So take, for example, um, in the tourism area, if the visual condition is not like what we expect, that if you are visiting Bali, for example, you want you expect that the clean um, environment, the clean beaches. But if you coming to Bali, for example, and you see a lot of plastic debris in the shoreline or in the beaches, perhaps you will say, next time I won't go to Bali anymore. So it's not only so the plastic pollution is not only affected the environment, but it's also, there is an ecosystem um, functions that is not work. If the ecosystem function doesn't work, so probably it will also impact the socioeconomic. So that is why all the, like Dr. Jane, all the students here from the ICAs, uh, all my students, we are hoping that perhaps we can also contribute to the solution of these plastic challenges. And it's also recognized by the government of United Nations Environmental Assembly back in March in 2022. All of the, not all, but most of the governments in union, they are agreed to negotiate a legally bond, binding treaty to end plastic pollution by 2024. And yesterday, in fact, Yesterday is the last day when the intergovernmental um, uh, negotiations committee discussed in Paris and they are talking and reinforce the need of legally binding treaty to end the plastic pollution by 2024. So I will write the correspondence for the natures uh, back in 2024. We recognize we don't need a robust evidence on the effectiveness and the threat of between action intended to reduce, reuse, recycle, reorient, and diversify or substitute, perhaps a substitute of conventional plastic that we already produce massive production since 1950. Okay, I want satisfy your appetite to talk about the chemistry here at this moment, but at least bear with me. I will discuss about monitoring other things that will be, will be direct our research in the future and will direct us and our enthusiasm to, to find a solution and measure for this plastic pollution. Okay, so. I would satisfy you. What about if we substitute the plastic into this bioplastic or degradable plastic? Which one is more, more important? I don't want to contrast it this time. Maybe next time we will discuss about it. But at least I would like to um, highlight the importance of monitoring of plastic waste in the environment. How so? Why is this important? What, what, what about if, for example, the, the, the Sunway University or your university, my university, all of us together, 
for example, doing individual um, activities and together we can also reduce the amount of plastic we generated every day. Okay, so how do we know that we achieve the target? How do we know that we actually already reduce the amount of plastic we, we use every day? How we can deal with that? So it is, it is highlighting the importance of monitoring of plastic in the environment and how our individual private actions can actually, as a global, regularly or at our university in ITB or at Sunway University can actually contribute to the reduction of plastic waste in the environment. Okay, so I will give you the examples that currently our uh, in Indonesia, we have the National Action Plan of Marine Debris Management. It's stated in our presidential decree number 83, 2018. We have five strategy, how to reduce the amount of leakage of plastic debris in the environment by 2025. And uh, we expect our target is 70% reduction. How can we know that we achieved 70% reductions? Jane previously already mentioned that there are several studies showing in, in Asia, there are some countries was in the second contribution, fifth contribution, ninth contribution, and all this model uh, emphasize that there is a waste generation and waste leakage into the environment. Uh, so we have to deal with. Okay, so there are several other study was conducted in Indonesia to see, uh, to calculate the baseline. We need a baseline because if we have a target, that it means that we have to, where do I, where should I start, right? And, I like uh, the Jane concept. We start to from ourselves. I did it again. I I also did a composting uh, in my house. I also have a composter. I doing a little gardening, urban gardening in my house because I know all my food waste. It can, it, it shouldn't be end up in the landfill side. It should be end up my small house. So I need. I need an activity so that I can compost, then the compost I can use for my small garden in my house. Okay, so it means start. Initially, we, we need to have an, a baseline where we understand where to start. Similarly, to achieve the Indonesian target uh, in a, a national action plan to reduce plastic debris uh, leakage uh, in the oceans by, 70%, so we needed a baseline. There are several studies, including Jambek, uh, the report from our a colleague from uh, Breen, and the other um, a study from uh, international researchers. And most of it's coming into the number of around 200 to 600,000 uh, ton per year plastic will decade into the environment. So we choose in 2018, we choose one baseline. One of the important part of monitoring that we need, we don't sometimes, sometimes for practicality, the government say, what about if we, if we're looking at the baseline and how they we can calculate it in very simple way. So we try as, as an engineer, of course, the simpler it is, the better. I think it's the, the common principle for the scientists as well, right? If you have a several uh, explanation, pick the simple one because it's the right one. So it's similarly in engineering, we also try to develop um, a calculation of baseline based on a very simple model, which is we in the national coordination of marine debris uh, leakage management, we developed this um, very simple calculations how to, uh, to calculate the baseline. So because we want to know what is the, the current um, the abundance of plastic uh, leakage in the environment. So the plastic debris leakage is, is equal to the land-based leakage plus the sea-based leakage. 
but we needed the data to fulfill all the equation, the simple equations. I mean, it start with the first these equations, but it uh, follow up by several other equations. So we need the data. And fortunately, in Indonesia, we already developed a national database regarding a solid waste, which is organized by the Ministry of Environment and uh, Forestry. So we have this, we call it SE. PSM, System Informasi Pengelolaan Sampah. Um, based though, as a scientist, of course, an engineer, some of the data probably is not so accurate, we cannot validate. But as a scientist, we know how to, 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 to it's not a re-engineer, but we try to understand the data, what are the mistakes, and we create all the data and see whether the, we can use the data to uh, perform the simple measurements. And we did. And the result is almost similar like previous studies. So it's around 600,000 ton per year, the plastic leakage probably in the environment. So we picked that number. Okay. Again, when we already have the baseline, we need to understand, can we achieve the 70% reduction by 2025? Um, okay, yeah. And I'd like to also highlight Dr. James Burks. I also fan of the um, citizen science, which involved in monitoring. I think it's, a, it's a, one of the measures that we have to consider uh, for monitoring the plastic debris uh, in the environment. So we did um, a monitor, we developed three types of methods we, as, as an engineer, but our principle is based on science, right? We want to develop methodology, three types of methodology. Should we do it directly, measure, you do the waste characterizations directly into the environment, or can we also involve technology that it can make, out, make our life easier? so that we don't have to go to the field and counting, collecting all the ways. It's not an easy work, it's tedious work and it involves a lot of uh, human resources. I did it so many times for waste characterizations in Indonesia. In fact, for this year, I have to go to the field for 10 more national wide uh, waste characterization in Indonesia. Why it's so, why it is important? It's because we need a valid data to understand what is the magnitude of the problems. But again, this is, I want to emphasize the importance of the data, but eventually later on in the, our conclusions and active actions, all action is more important than the data itself. But to start, in easy start, we need to understand the data and we have to get an accurate and valid data. So this is what we did. So we, we combined a three method how, well, to monitor um, the plastic debris in the, in, in the environment because Bandung Institute of Technology is in Institute of Technology. So we, our interventions by using the technology. So my colleagues from um, other faculty, Dr. Anjar and also the faculty from, elect, uh, my colleague from electrical engineering, we developed this, a methodology how to, for example, using a remote sensing like UAV image data or also a satellite image data, then to, to categorize whether it's it's waste or not, whether it's plastic or non-plastic, or and then categorize and the, the, the itemize into whether what type of plastic, so whether it really will be polyethylene terephthalate, will it be polyphenols, will it be polystyrenes, and et cetera. So what we did in piloting, which we are lucky enough that we have funded by the, the bank, that we have a three piloting um, area in Indonesia. Um, but MC, would you like if Bu Amanda, because I'm a lecturer, I talk too much. If I have only have five minutes, remind me, okay? So in, in the, in the pilot project, we have three areas, Chisadane River, Chitarum River, and Tukat Saba. We, we, we're doing directly, we, pack, we, uh, we put a net in the river and collecting all the plastic and other type of waste debris uh, into the net. And if we put it and correct and we do the waste characterization, that's a massive. 
there's a lot of items we found during um, the field sampling. And it involved more than 15 um, people who helped us to characterize that. For, for example, we found a day more than 1,800 items. Um, so more than one kilos, sometimes it's more than 1,000 kilo a day. So it means it means what predicted by the modelers in the previous um, uh, report, showing that a sixty um, a six hundred thousands uh, ton of plastic leakage probably it's yeah it, it, we, we can justify that number. Why, while we are doing the samples, we know there is a lot of um, plastic item we found. And also if we scale it, there's a lot the, 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 the more, sometimes we found more than one kilo a day and et cetera. Okay, so we did a characterization. Why waste characterization is so important? Jane also did it because we want to, okay, so these times, Please separate to your mind. Jane, start with individual actions. Now, this, this one, uh, one of the objective of monitoring that we can share the result of this monitoring to inform decision maker, what should we do next? For example, in the Southern area for Chitarong River and Saba River in Indonesia, we know that the highest percentage of plastic we found in the environment, especially at river, at the water body and estuary, is a single use plastic. Either it's monolayer films, uh, Jane probably said it's PP, right? Uh, or multi-layer sachet, which is combined between plastic and aluminum. And we also found so many plastic stopping back in the environment. So if we understand the, the type of plastic in the environment, if we're looking back, um, the solution that we want, we compare with and reduce, reuse, recycles, um, reorients or across the value chains, or uh, we want to, you, you're a chemistry, you like to substitute the conventional plastic into something more degradable, for example, or using a, and naturals, ingredients, and etc. I love to hear that from the, the polymer scientists from here. But again, if we want to target a policy into what uh, item, we should find out what are the items, uh, what policy, uh, what is the property and characteristic of that, the, uh, the, 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 the items, and then what functions that we want to to, to highlight so that, for example, as a chemical um, a scientist, you probably, okay, if is it um, um, it's most of the plastic, single use plastic we found in the environment is, um, uh, 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 we call it as a uh, uh, packaging, for example, then uh, we are trying to figure it out. How can we alter, a little bit alteration of this packaging that it can be, it won't harm the environment, but at the same time, it still fulfill the functions. So this is what we do. I will not go into much into all the detail of waste characterization we did, we did but I, I also want to highlight doing a field sampling in the environment is very tedious work. So we cannot just ask like 20 people to join us to do the waste characterizations and we put a net and then collecting all, all the plastic or other uh, uh, debris flat into the net. So we need other, other innovation, how we can monitor this type of plastic. So what we did, um, what about with using AI and using a, a drone like unmanned um, aerials, vehicle, so that it's easier, so we, we don't have to walk all over uh, the water bodies and then use this um, UAV 
and then captures the image and then we can analyze the image. So we are working with our colleagues from the Germans and uh, they develop uh, what they call it the convolution neural network. And currently in ITB, we also work with the electrical engineering. Uh, uh, we also develop a, an algorithm so that we can also identify and categorize the, uh, the plastic by using the drone. Of course, similar functions that we want to highlight which which item, how many, how much, um, what is the property, what is the function, so that we can intervene later on. So this is what we did. So we, we developed a method using artificial intelligence, but this time with the, uh, we, with the help of a colleague from the, if the FKI, <laughs> I don't know the term in German, but because they are coming from um, um, uh, German University, it's the Center of Artificial Intelligence. But we already developed a, a, a similar um, uh, algorithm in ITB, and we are ready to share it with all the university in Indonesia or across the region that we can use this type of method, method to monitor uh, our nations or our regions or globally. Okay, so similarly, it's a different area, different type probably, but most of uh, the functions, the objective for the monitoring is almost similar. So we do, again, Indonesia is not a small country. <laughs> we are a huge country, more than 70,000 island. We cannot just count on drone, the UAV. We need, other intervention technology so that we can also categorize uh, the plastic item by using a remote sensing, but not the UAV or drone, because we want to capture bigger and huge area. So what we did, we also developed a, a satellite imaginary analysis. We're using a plastic index. And again, it depends on the type of the satellite. So those of you who are scientists in the um, uh, remote sensing, probably you know different satellite, probably different index, different spectrum, and etc. So it means, but again, we are developing. If we are using one type of uh, um, uh, uh, sat two type of satellite, and we 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 develop a, uh, a algorithm that we can use this index to identify and categorize the plastic type. So based on this, so. Perhaps it's a sunny day, and there's no cloud, uh, we can capture the image, we can, we can categorize and find out uh, what type of plastic it's actually in the environment. But it's not as easy as Buemenda's <laughs> discussion today. It takes a long time to understand how, how to develop this plastic index. If you're interested, there are um, my colleagues from the, Dr. Anjar, which we together um, developed it. He done the work more than I, for sure. But he understand how to develop this plastic index. And we also uh, revise the plastic index into a justic plastic index according to our samples. Uh, OK, so this is what we did. So we understand which one is actually water, which one is uh, the, 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 the other type of ways which one is plastic okay so i skip that one but again uh the monitoring itself it's not a stand alone activity we did the monitoring because we one that we i already emphasized at first because we want to know whether our target is already achieved the second one because we we know that we need to enabler the system to send the alert. If, for example, there is a case in the environment, there's too many plastic debris, it's already there. If we're going back of the negative impact of the plastic uh, pollutions in the environment that we know, we cannot just uh, stand, we cannot just ignore if there is a plastic accumulation, the plastic debris accumulation in the environment. So the, the important part of uh, monitoring is to enable the system to send the alert. So that, for example, 
the one the, uh, the the entities who's responsible to for example to deal with or to collect and transport or treat the waste know where it's about and for NGO like for example some uh, Jane's NGO if you for example want to 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 do the clean up program activity by using this method uh, we can also highlight it, which part of the river bank is which actually have a lot of plastic debris accumulations. So it's also uh, can be an information for a decision maker where they have to invest the infrastructure uh, to another cleanup programs to, for example, where to 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 build. Uh, a, a new plan for the past we call it in Indonesia or material recovery facilities because it should be close to the uh, to the area. But again, again, it's always about the data. It's always about the monitoring. But the the important part, if we ignore the plastic in the environment and we um, not ignore, but if we, for example, increase our needs uh, for the plastic, our ability to keep pace with the increased demands of plastic production and plastic need, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, there are also one study showing that even though we do a recycling, reuse, and reductions, then the amount of plastic debris leakage into the environment is still high. So it means that choosing only one solution is not the best solution at this time. So it means that we can also uh, it's not framing, right? You, I, I ask and urge you to also challenge your thoughts about what about if we reduce the production of plastic? Although, though, although, of course, as a developed country, now Indonesia was catching up with the Malaysia, right? We want to be the developed country as well. So sometimes uh, the, de the developments of a country, it's dependent on the amount of plastic consumptions. And at this moment in Indonesia, on average, only 50 kilograms per capita per, per year. If we compare to other countries in Europe and the United States, the consumption of plastic is 100, 140 or 150 kilograms per capita per day. Why is that so? Because plastic is amazing materials. It can substitute almost, almost everything. We can, it's, you're a scientist here. You're the polymer scientist here. So you know how you can be a god of plastic. You can combine all the property and etc. to be more, more sophisticated and more function for the needs of uh, you, our daily activity. But again, if we still, if we still doing what we do, though we increase the, the rate of recycling, though we 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 do these we, we reduce uh, or, or we develop a, a, a more material recovery facilities or we increase the collection uh, rate of waste. It cannot pace out with our needs on the plastic. So bear in mind, bear with Buemenda. Okay. So this is probably my two last slides. Uh, as a scientist, I would like to highlight this because we we still again there's a lot of gap of um, uh, knowledge in the to get an accurate and meaningful assessment of marine plastic distribution and movements, uh, so that we can pick up one by one so any place in the world is already polluted by the plastic or, or contaminated even a very uh, remote area is already contaminated with plastic so we can say that it's plastics already pollute the environment all over the world uh as a, to highlight the monitoring so we need a large scale and long-term monitoring uh, across the country and marine environment 
and not only beaches, but also in the water column, seafloor, sediment, across a wide range of debris size. Not only we are discussing the microplastic, whether microplastic is uh, occur or available prefelt in the salt or in the water and etc. But we also need to, to see it as a risk. So we are not talking about the microplastic of now, but we also think about the nanoplastic because the smaller it is, the more risk we get as a human being. But monitoring is only monitoring without without our our way to find a solutions. And I urge you to find any other solution or any combination of solutions so that we can deal with to, to reduce the amount of plastic we consume every day. That's all, thank you. Mm, like Jane, I want to also promote that I would like to be, ITV will be the center of plastic monitoring in the nation, nationally and also regionally. So if you like to collaborate with us, uh, um, just send a, 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 um, an email to Parino from our, uh, community service, uh, resident community service, and we would like to also share our methodology, how we can monitor the plastic so we can do it in the, not in the regular, together, nationally, regionally, or globally. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Imenda, for the interesting and knowledgeable uh, presentation. At this moment, I'm sure our audience can't wait to engage with you. Therefore, I think it's time for us to have Q&A session with our honorable panelists. To get this session started, let me introduce to you our moderator for today. All right, so our moderator for today, Dr. Anindria Nastiti, is from Institute Technology Bandung, uh, Indonesia. All right, Institute, sorry, Institute Technology Bandung, Indonesia. So she is an associate assistant professor in environmental management and technology research group, faculty of civil and environmental engineering, Institute Technology Bandung, ITB. She is an engineer by training who chose to pursue interdisciplinary research in the intersections of environment and human behavior. Her advising topics include water supply, sanitation and hygiene, environmental health, environmental and behavior, as well as water governance and institution. In year 2021, she was the speaker with topic environment and behavior fostering interdisciplinary thinking among young engineers towards sustainability in Young Engineer Fest year 2021, shaping the future of Indonesia. In year 2022, she has become the core investigator for three particular research projects, which are first, sustainable sanitation for the marginalized groups in Eastern Indonesia, cooperation between ITB, UGM, and Universitas Udayana, funded by Sanitation Learning Hub, United Kingdom. Second, assessing climate change impacts on occupational health and productivity, Indonesian farmers and forestry workers, cooperation between ITB and ITB, funded by Red Cross. Third, prevalence policies, practices, and norms surrounding antibiotic resistant diseases in Indonesia, cooperation between ITB and Global Environmental Health Lab, funded by Global Environmental Health Lab. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's our honor to have Dr. Anindra with us today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Anindra. Doctor, the floor is now yours. Thank you so much, uh, dear Master of Ceremony, Ms. Ng. Uh, can, is my voice audible? Yes. Oh, okay, perfect. Okay, thank you so much for the time. And I would first congratulate uh, Dr. Jen Ju and also Dr. Amanda Sambiring for the very interesting presentations that I've been captivated for the last one hour listening to both of you. And uh, I'm not a, an expert in solid waste or plastic pollution problem, but I do find some uh, like general topics, general problems that the plastic problems are facing at the moment uh, compared to other type of uh, environmental pollutants uh, also in water. So 
I do have several questions for the presenters, but firstly, I would like to give the floor to the audience. If you have any questions, please see, uh, please see, uh, please also you can put down your question on the chat box. And also, if you would like to speak directly, you can open your mic, please uh, just raise your hand and I will call upon your name. Anyone? Uh, if not, then maybe we can't have a discussion first, right, uh, Dr. Jane and also Dr. Amanda. So that was very insightful and very interesting. And I think uh, the two of the presentations are pretty much have uh, important messages uh, in regards to tackling the pollution problem. If I may, I have some burning questions to Dr. Jane, you, for example, uh, for, uh, first. But, but first, I would like to congratulate for the very a nice program that you have in the Sunway University in terms of food waste and also that your assistant was crowned as to, to receive grant. Uh, so Dr. Jane, uh, I'm interested first about the, uh, the, the, the fact that you mentioned that segregation between food waste and plastic waste is important. And I know that it's now, I think it relies heavily on individual awareness and behavior because you have to do that from the source, right? So what's your take on that matter? How uh, could we as a uh, academic also maybe sometimes involved in policy to, you know, to, to promote that segregation effectively so later the, 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 the waste can be handled more proper uh, after in, in, the, in the chain? So can you give me your insight? Thank you, thank you, Dr. Anindra. Uh, okay, so so uh, in this for this uh, number one, we have to walk the talk. We cannot just talk yeah. and not doing it. So we have to show that we can we can as an individual can do it. You know, we need to show that uh, we can do it, and then we don't just uh, talk and and come up with some uh, policy or in uh, implementations that only other people can do. So from my, from my experience, my observations is if we, if we give, if we can come up a solutions, if we can give you a solutions to the community, it is very easy to implement the mm -hmm. change. So for example, because uh, before, before, before I, we, we started the composting uh, as the solutions, we, we encourage, we keep on talking, create awareness, we are talking about waste segregations, but but uh, nobody know nobody how know how to do it, nobody care how to do it, and nobody aware or find how uh why should I do it? You know, mm -hmm. because it, it is very tedious. You can ask yourself, do you do you pack uh, sometimes when we eat already, we just pack with the plastic and we throw all the all the mm -hmm. food waste. That is the easiest things to do. So uh, when we start to introduce uh, solutions, which is um, we have a composting machine in the industry, and immediately everybody see the effort of uh, waste segregations is is appreciated. They know they know that whatever that they segregated will transform will be transformed into an organic compost that will go back to the uh, environment, will go back to the earth, and they immediately they do they can uh, in the implementation, the implementation, I will say that is very, very successful. We don't have to argue and we don't have to persuade. We don't have to impose a penalty. We don't have to impose any, give any uh, rewards. And everybody is just happily do it. Start from the vendors because uh, in the university community is not just uh, the academic and students. We start from ourselves, definitely the vendors, the the cleaner. We train the cleaner as well. It's not just uh, the the facility, the workers. Uh, every every single stakeholders we we uh, we teach them how to do it. And the vendor with the vendors, we talk with we, uh, we have a sessions one hour, and then we bring them to the composting machine and show them how does it work. And everybody get a pack of uh, compost. So this is very, 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 very important when we when we give a solutions, but we don't uh, say, oh, you should stop it. So you should stop it. But uh, the community, the public will ask how you can ask all of uh, attendance attendees here. They will probably will ask us. OK, so they say they say no tobacco. The world recently we just celebrate some days that no tobacco day. So no tobacco day, uh, those who addict to smoking, who smoke irregularly, what can they do? 
So they, they, they somehow, some company introduced vaping. Vaping is worse than that, but vaping is not a solution. They thought that it can be a solution, but there's no, 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 no help. How to, how, what is the solution? What is the best solutions to, to address? You know, don't, don't just ask people, don't, don't smoke. It's, it's quite tough for those who want to quit smoking. It's not easy to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. Thank you, Dr. Jane. Yes, I, I think uh, what you mentioned is very interesting that you uh, first start to turn to ignite the motive first for, the, for, for people to do what's uh, considered as right. And I see your video also uh, that you that you played before. It's uh, it's amazing that it has so many, uh, you know, a moral moral values inserted in the script, like the collective responsibility, awareness, and stuff. So I think uh, I think it's a very effective way of uh, you know uh, moving people's heart to do to to participate in the project. Okay, let's uh, go back to that later on. Uh, I'm still waiting for questions from the audience. Well, uh, while waiting, I would like to go to Ibu Amanda. Hi, Ibu Amanda. How are you today? Nice to see you in the Zoom. Fantastic, Asti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're actually colleagues in, in, in one department. So it's uh, funny to see each other in the Zoom today. But I, I'm, I'm also like your presentation. It's, it's, I, uh, I know it's like uh, it's, it was on the paper that was recently published in scientific reports, right? If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with you that monitoring is important to know the baseline to see if we have achieved the target. And uh, in your paper, I think you use, uh, uh, to my knowledge, correct me if I'm wrong, such an advanced technology by combining satellite imageries and also AI, right? Uh, and because you state that regular monitoring are important, do you think that these methods can be, I don't know, upscaled to inform policy and law enforcement on a regular basis because it's used such an advanced technology and mainly to be used by the local governments and stakeholders? But what do you think? Um, thank you for the questions, Ati. Uh, Dr. Atis. Um, yes, that is why we want to do this piloting in Indonesia because we want to inform the decision makers. It's not about monitoring. It's about mm -hmm. the actions, the enabled mm -hmm. activity that how the data and information uh, can be delivered to any authorities or entities who's responsible to that. For example, for cleanup programs, I know uh, the, the, we can also use this the same the almost similar methodology but using people like everybody involved to report whether mm -hmm. there is an accumulations of uh, uh, plastic waste or waste in the environment so that so that the data and information will be alert will be as an alert to the local government so they can provide a track or any collections or transported uh, vehicle. So they were going there, cleaning up that area and bring it and treat the waste or dispose to the landfill site properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think, we think before, although we already highlighted if we, if we consume plastic as the rate as we did now, we cannot keep in pace. So at least in the, I, I say monitoring, and cleanup program is a short term and medium term solution. It's not a long term solution because we need to find others and combination of solutions that we can. And for example, we have to reduce the amount of plastic we consume. But what are the substitution of plastic, which is plastic, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. They have amazing property, sophisticated. And, I think every day is the, 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 the polymer uh, god. <laughs> they know how to combine all these properties and characteristics and develop a new type of uh, plastic material. But again, again, I see, it's a short term and medium term solutions. So what we need, we don't allow the plastic at the first place to be scattered in the environment. So we have to find out, and it's, it's, it's a part of our contribution as scientists or engineers contribute say what you think it's important 
even though it's only a small data, like we develop a, 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 a what we call is a, 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 a everybody can info to to give the information if they found any plastic in the bridges, and then we we directly we already have that kind of uh, systems which we work with the uh, a colleague professor Trio Adiono in the electrical engineering, and from that that side of image one side of image we know the type of plastic and then uh it the the data and information sending to a system so we need to enable uh that system so that it can inform the decision makers that's the important part it should be enabler it can't be stand alone monitoring system without the enablers ecosystem and system i don't think it will work Okay, wonderful. Uh, I think that's a very interesting take on monitoring. To uh, I found something that you said is really interest, uh, interesting. Uh, the, you mentioned that uh, maybe citizens also can report if there's a plastic accumulation somewhere in the environment. And I think it's also related what Dr. Jane mentioned before regarding the self-reported uh, plastic audits, waste audit uh, within the house. Uh, my question would be, uh, for those kind of approach, uh, we call them in social science as a citizen science or citizen monitoring. So do you think uh, that kind of approach uh, is crucial at the moment and how effective it would contribute in reducing the use of plastics, uh, in your opinion? Yes, for, for short term and medium term, because we want to, to reduce uh, mm -hmm. and collect all the plastic we already available and accumulate mm -hmm. in the environment. So citizen science um, improvements is important. We develop a system, but it again, <laughs> we need to enable an NGO yeah. like Jane's NGO and other NGO. So they know there's an accumulation of waste there somewhere in there. So they will bring all of um, the, the friends Friends of uh, the NGOs and do the cleanup programs, mm -hmm. and we also have to. It 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 probably part of the solution. We can't say that it's the the only one that mm -hmm. we can reduce the the problems. But the important thing, data information, it should be enabled that we take an actions. That's the important message that I want to highlight. Okay, okay. What do you think, Dr. Jane? I I uh I work I work um closely. I think this one is very important to me the on the community engagement, because mm -hmm. uh you you can um you can understand what what is the challenges that they face. You know we can mm -hmm. we can we can have we can uh put a big data we can publish every day. Wow, wow Malaysia top three, uh you know, <laughs> but. But it, it 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 will be just a day kind of things. Then after that, it, uh, they start throw again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes I, I also feel that I also do a, a media analysis and how mm. to how the media can uh, make an impact. The the all this media in the newspaper or in the social media uh, it makes in any impact or not. I think this one are uh, all the all the role. All, everyone have to contribute. The stakeholders, not not just the academics, the research, the government. If everybody will just point finger, the government should do this, should do that. But um, if we impose a penalty, impose tax, uh, it may it may be not uh not so perfect. I will say the habit wise, behavior wise may not be, but uh, but but uh, but anyway, the government can provide a facility because we, we if, as long as we have instrument. Like okay, let's say the recycling center uh nearby, you will do it. But if it's like one hour drive, will you do it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm not very sure because in uh, some country, you know, it's like everywhere, everywhere they put the recycling or the segregation bins, so it makes things easy to do it. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, as uh, uh okay, any. Anyone have questions to Dr. Jane or Dr. Amanda? Please raise your hand or you can also uh, drop them on the chat. But while waiting, I would like to move further into the discussion. Now we agree that we have the data, monitoring data is available at the moment and we know how to do it. Now we move how to actually solve the problem, right? That, that's the, 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 the most difficult challenges. Uh, 
be as as a non expert in plastic waste because i know it's a very complicated problem because everybody is using plastics and like women is uh, said it's it practically cr- can replace almost everything it's very durable and we use that on daily basis uh so considering all the things that you have done uh, and that what is the 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 most effective pathway to actually trying to solve the plastic problems because in behavior science we usually we usually in general uh, separate problems into two areas behavioral problems and structural problems so what is do you what do you think is the uh, the the pathway that is much more maybe easier for now to effectively gain the results that we hope Perhaps Bu Amanda, or do you have some insights about that? Okay, it's a very difficult question. <laughs> Nothing easy. I, I want to be positive here. It, yeah. it, it's it's like Jane says. I actually prefer start with yourself. It's the, mm. the important one yeah. because I also want to highlight. Even though the simulation, the model are already showing us, <laughs> if we keep increasing the the plastic consumption, we cannot keep in pace with that. So, mm. so it's a dilemma. I want to reduce the my consumption, but I need them. Of course, I I have a need. Mm. I, I, I need these materials. But at the same time, for the scientists, I think it's a, a very challenging to find to find a materials that will be having almost similar property to plastic. It, it will be um, a deal. I mean, it's it, it will be the, the most waiting solution for all of us because it's a dilemma, Buasdi. If I said, mm-hmm. okay, banning the plastic, stopping plastic bag, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. Then we, we come up with all this uh, stopping bag we call it not plastic, but it's actually some part of it. It's still uh, the type of polymer. And then we collecting and it, it, it accumulates in your house. Every time we have an event, then you got this, this type of plastic, not a plastic bag. So it, again, we have to find a, a material that can be, can be um, fulfill the function mm-hmm. of plastic. Uh, and at the same time, so we can also reduce the, our plastic consumption. So sometimes, uh, like in packaging, sometimes they, they will be a primary packaging, secondary pa- packaging, tertiary packaging, probably is for aesthetic visuals de- decoration. We don't need it. We want it. We don't need it. So perhaps the designs, that is why one of the solutions we introduce in our uh, research with the colleagues in the uh, UK that we want to change all the system analysis across the value chain. It's not about the industry, all the stakeholders, us, why, how we decide which one to choose, which material we choose. Do I need it? Do I want it? Do I need it? Do I want it? Mm-hmm. So, yes, again, it's not as simple to twist the hand, mm-hmm. but it's a time for us to aware because increasing awareness is also important. We, we in RTB itself, you know, Jane probably already started in Sunway. We are now start from the square one from ITB. We are developing material recovery facilities. We will provide the uh, separation of bin. We're trying to, for example, double the bin based on how we treat the waste. For example, one it should be goes to composting. So everybody know what we can compost to be food waste. But again, when you look at the bin and then it will mix again. So the second one, the things, uh, education and awareness rising, we cannot, we cannot stop that awareness. Even in the start, in our campus, as the in our yeah. <laughs> study program in environmental engineer, we already provided this waste bin, separated waste bin. But sometimes, eventually, we forget, and we have to keep engaged with mm. the students, the lecturers, and everyone, so that maybe I try to be optimistic, but perhaps we can uh, sometimes one time then we realize that it's our habit. 
Okay, thank you. I think that the dose of optimism that you show, like a kind of contagious with Amanda. So I hope that everybody has the same positivity as you are, and we are we will be start you know starting with ourselves to to solve this complex problem. Okay, and Dr. Jane, what do you think about uh, about that? I I uh <clears throat> I want to uh re re reinstate just now the our Malaysia roadmap that um shortlisted the four four widely used uh commonly used uh highly used highly disposed uh four type of the plastic, I think is it is a wise decisions to consolidate consolidate this four narrow uh from seven cut down to four. And then uh, we can just focus on managing these four plastic uh, plastic material. So we can, uh, but the challenge one, number one is uh, too, too many types of plastic material use, uh, making um, segregations of, uh, uh, segregation is difficult. And also to, because if, if let's say uh, we want to encourage investor to invest, to start a recycling center, uh, we, need, we need to have uh, plastic waste, correct not? <laughs> Like, like let's say last time they 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 encourage people to to make biochar, but now uh, we need to buy like some palm palm oil uh, meals uh, to to form to to process them into biochar. It become a it become a value. It, it creates a values to it. So we if we have we we want to encourage investor now we need to have plastic waste to we have we need to have the volume to to for the recycling center to to. To, to run, correct? No? If we don't have, uh, we don't uh, segregate them, uh, then we don't have the volume that they cannot, cannot they can't, uh, in the in the industry-wise, uh, in the bigger scale-wise, we can't work like a uh, 100 gram, 100 gram, 200 gram, like, like a lab scale. We, can, we have to look at tons. No, we, we are reporting like tons uh, of um, plastic waste in the world, but, uh, but they don't segregate them. If we don't segregate them, uh, we are not able to get back the monomer, the, the pure solvent. That means uh, from polypropylene, if we mix uh, one, two, PET, PP, everything, then you probably have a mixture of uh, et uh, ethylene and prop propylene inside uh, process. So it's, it, it makes the chemical processes is very, very hard. Recycling is um, one of the process is pyrolysis to convert it to monomer. It, recycling is not upcycling. Upcycling is you make into make some uh, the plastic material is still there, the plastic waste is still there, but you you make use of it, uh, make it like a, a gardening. You put it into gardening, like you make you make it like a pot like that. That is that is upcycling. That is something different. Uh, but it, the, these are the plastic waste that uh, will stay with us forever. Uh, right and and longer than our life lifetime, and then a uh, refuse um, is very important. Uh, we, we we just need to start and influence uh, people around us. Uh, we keep talking for me. We keep um, I talk, keep talking about it and create a, a campaign is very important. The campaign uh, awareness is very important. The campaign must include some practices so that uh, we can let them because we we learn from doing it and we know what is feasible and what is not feasible. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Okay, thank you so much for the insights. And I think that's very interesting. Uh, as many other complex environmental problems, I think plastics are also inter uh, plastic problems are also interdisciplinary and we need uh, you know, different takes and approach like engineers also have to work together also with social scientists and also interdisciplinary with the stakeholders. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Jane and Dr. Amanda for the very interesting discussions. If you still have questions, I think you can address them directly to our uh, uh, speakers at the moment. And I know that we still have student chapter after this. So I would like to close the discuss the discussion se uh, sessions with Dr. Jane and Dr. Amanda Sembering. Thanks, thank you so much for uh, the very fruitful discussions. And I would like to give the floor back to the MC. Thank you, Ms. Ang, please. All right, thank you. It's been enlightening to hear our speakers and moderators' perspective and also uh, opinions on the plastic pollution. So once again, thank you to the speakers, Dr. Gyu and Dr. Amanda, and also our moderators, Dr. Anindra, for the fruitful sharing.
It's our pleasure to have you with us today. So, well, moving on. All right. Have you ever wondered what have been done by the uh, SES student chapters? So now let's have our student chapters, SES ITB, and also SES UM, who have become the committees for this online talk, and also the Reimagining Plastics Infographic Challenge RPIC, to have an interesting sharing session with us. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me to give a warm virtual welcome to Mr. Norvin, the president of SES ITB, to start his sharing. The floor is now yours, Mr. Norvin. Okay, thank you, uh, Mrs. Chiwi. Can I uh, share my screen? Okay, thank you. Let's see. Oh, can you uh, enable me to share my screen? Maybe permission? Yeah. Oh. Mm, maybe the host. Yeah, maybe the host can give me the permission to share my. Okay, okay, I can share my screen right now. Okay, thank you. So once again, my name is Novan and I'm from ACS ITB Student Chapter. So what is ACS ITB Student Chapter? Let's go next. So actually, uh, we're the first uh, and I think the only uh, ACS student chapter in Indonesia that's established at 2020. So we are at relatively very young. Our main focus here is to advance in chemistry knowledge, elevate career potential, expand our no uh, networks, and also collaborate uh, globally as well. Therefore, we have several events that we uh, support for our purpose. So what are our events? So those events are held as such as webinars, international competitions, and also social projects in order to bring impact to uh, society. Here, I give you an example for our internal forum uh, to aim and to enhance our members' knowledge and expertise to prepare for professional goals. And the next slide is our other activity, such as national and international webinars. So here we uh, have some webinars that we include like several speakers uh, from ITB and also from outside ITB. Uh, besides that, we also have uh, some sort of culture exchange. Uh, over here is shown that we did a culture exchange with University Technology Malaysia or ETM. And finally, uh, this is the latest uh, event that we held. It's like a international paper competition that we held with uh, various collaboration within our department and student associate association uh, within ITB uh, students as well. So that's all from me. I think that's enough, right, to introduce about uh, ACS ITB student chapter. Uh, therefore, I'd like to bring that back to Mrs. Chiu Hui. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, Mr. Northern, for the very fruitful sharing about ICS, uh, SES ITB. So now let's move on to the sharing session for SES UM by watching the video that has been prepared. Please enjoy the video.
All right. Thank you, SES ITB and SES UM for the interesting sharing session. I believe all of us here can't wait to engage with you with the student chapters for upcoming events. Stay tuned with them. So now, ladies and gentlemen, is the time for one of the most exciting uh, moments in this morning, the announcement of our winners for Reimagining Plastics Infographic Challenge, RPIC. So throughout this challenge, we have witnessed incredible talents and remarkable achievements from our participants. It's time to celebrate and recognize those who have stood out from this challenge. Before I proceed, I would like to also extend my gratitude to all the participants for their dedication and hard work. Your patience and commitment have made this competition truly exceptional. Also, I would like to acknowledge the esteemed panel of judges who have had the challenging task of evaluating all the entries. Their expertise and also careful deliberation have ensured a fair and unbiased selection process. So, throughout this challenge, we have received eight entries from both Indonesia and Malaysia for RPIC. And now we are glad to review the finalists for this challenge. Now, without further ado, let's review the winners. So, are you guys excited? Can I have the reaction for all the participants in RPIC? Are you guys here? Maybe you can give a thumbs up. All right, I can see some of the reactions. So I think you guys also can wait one more moment. So now let's review. The third prize goes to Chiu Junjie and Muhammad Fari bin Muhammad Jamaluddin from University Science Malaysia. Congratulations. Can you guys uh, turn on your camera and have a photography session? Are you guys here? Chiu Junjie and Muhammad Fari bin Muhammad Jamaluddin. Uh, yes, I'm here. Hello. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay, so maybe our host and co-host can help to, uh, how to say, give them a highlight, okay? And take a photo. All right. Okay, so I, are we ready? One, two, three. All right, thank you so much for your participation. And now, Let's review the second prize. So who will be the second prize winner? Let's see. So we have, congratulations to Ko Shi En and Chan Zhi Min from University Technology Malaysia and also University Malaya. Congratulations. So can you guys also turn on your camera? Feel free to turn on your camera. And we shall have a photography session. The host can help to highlight them. Kok Shi En and Chan Zhimin. Yeah, don't be shy. Such a wonderful infographic. Yeah. So are we ready? All right. One, two, three. Okay, congratulations. So now I think we all know who's the winner of first prize already. Okay, but however, I still have to review. So the first prize goes to Lai Chen Fang, Sun Kala, and also Anastasia Kang Xin In from University Malaya. Congratulations. Yeah, the first winner of this RPIC challenge with the topic. Embrace change, unplastic the future. Congratulations. Can we have all of you to turn on your camera? Okay, so the host maybe can help to uh, pin them. Okay, so are you guys ready to take a photo? Yeah, this is our first prize. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, again, once again, congratulations to all the RPIC winners, okay? So your efforts are truly inspiring and we hope to see you again in all our upcoming events.
So, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our educational talk. I would like to express my deepest gratitude to Dr. Gil and Dr. Amanda for sharing their expertise with us today. Your valuable insights and every your, ever, your valuable insights have expanded our understanding of solutions to plastic solution to plastic pollution. I also want to thank each and every one of you for joining us. Your active participation and also engagement, your attention have made this educational online talk truly enriching. Remember, learning is a lifelong journey, and today we have taken a significant step forward together. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Helwis Chai to give a closing remark for the online talk today. Thank you, Ms. Ng. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we have reached the end of uh, this morning uh, webinar. I am the representative of iGroup Asia Pacific in Indonesia, and we are the partner of American Chemical Society publication. So I'm doing this closing remark on behalf of ACS publication because uh, Mandy cannot make it for today's session this, uh, this morning. Uh, ACS publication, as we know, uh, has uh, collaborated with LPPM ITB on this World Environmental Day event in the last three years with different topic every year, uh, starting with the topic of restore the earth for the first time. And this year is about the plastic pollution. It has become regular after three years in a row. And uh, so I'm looking forward for the fourth collaboration in this Environmental Day event next year. SES publication has maintained uh, its high quality in its publication and is shown in many high impact factor journal in many fields. So not only in chemistry, but uh, there are many fields that SES publication cover. And it's actually uh, cover uh, many, uh, they have many journals in environmental science or related to environmental science, uh, which is related to the today topic. You can check it out on ACS website uh, for the journal at pubs.acs.org. And for today, uh, we have heard from uh, the speakers, panelists, and as well as uh, the, uh, you know, uh, from the uh, infographics uh, information. A lot of information were being shared on plastic pollution. And after listening to the talk, and uh, seeing the infographic poster, uh, it has remind me, uh, remind ourselves that nature is suffering, uh, ocean filling with a lot of plastic, marine animal are suffering, and we realize it or not, uh, each, of, each one of us contribute to the plastic waste. And now is how all of us need to be, take responsible, uh, responsibility and become uh, part of the solution to solve this problem. Uh, we, have take, we have to take action to help making our environment better. So we not only talk, as uh, Dr. Jen mentioned, we have to work and talk. And all of us, as an individual person, uh, as a part of society, and also a part of the industry and also the government, as an individual, Video, as uh, Dr. Jen mentioned many points of it uh, in, his, in her presentation earlier, that we need to reduce of using plastic tools like plastic bag, plastic cup, uh, straw, and other tools from plastic and non-environmental friendly material. We can bring our own recycle, bin, uh, recycle bag for shopping. We can give donation for cleaning the ocean charities, helping on aggregation on plastic uh, waste, and many more. So uh, there are many things that we can do uh, to solve this problem, or at least to reduce the plastic waste in the environment. And as part of government and industry, uh, we know that our government have issued uh, many regulations to protect the environment. But many times, because of the economic development, uh, it's often putting ahead of environmental sustainability. So 
building economic is essential, but uh, we also need to work on a more sustainable economics that work for both the people and also uh, our planet. And on behalf of ACS and LPPM ITB, I would like to express my appreciation to all of you, to the speakers and panelists for their valuable contribution to this webinar uh, on the occasion of the World Environmental Day. And many thanks to all of you who attend this webinar and help to make it uh, such a successful event. My deepest thanks also to organizers from LPPM ITB, ACS student chapter from University of Malaya, and ACS student chapter from ITB uh, for the prior's contribution and for running such a smooth event. Thanks again to all of you and have a nice day. All right. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So Thank you, Mr. Helwis, for the wonderful closing remark. Ladies and gentlemen, before we end the talk today, please feel free to turn on your camera and join the photography session with us right now. Yeah. So please feel free to turn on your camera. And please change your Zoom background. Uh, please change your Zoom background. Yeah, we have shared it earlier on. Okay, the rest, please feel free to turn on your camera. Don't be shy. Is our uh, operator ready to take a photo? Yeah, I think while waiting, maybe the rest can turn on your camera. Please feel free to do so. It's not common for all of us to gather here, so please feel free to turn our camera. Okay, I think we shouldn't wait for a longer time. So, okay, smile everyone. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Yeah, it's quite boring to have no freestyle. Okay, please have your freestyle cheese. Yeah, okay. So one more. One, two, three. All right. Okay. So I think with this, this marks the end of our online educational talk. But wait, please don't leave first. Okay. Please don't leave. Okay. Yeah. For all the participants, please scan the QR code on the screen to fill in the feedback form. Okay. We truly appreciate your feedback in this event. And until we meet again, keep expanding your horizons and embracing this power of education. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.
So you have done filling in the feedback form, you may leave now. Yeah. Thank you for your participation.